Well, it's been much anticipated. We've been waiting six and a half long years for the return of Buzz Grant inside of the square circle. He's meeting a young man from New Brunswick, Marcel Mallet Jr., rocking a five, six, and one record. What can we expect from this young man? In the world, a lot of great fighters, and they can they have, probably could actually have their own Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame out there. Good sluggers come from there. We'll see. Uh, you know, we don't know if Mallet's agree. He's got five, six, and one, but maybe some of those decisions were home-based decisions that he should have won. But Good Grant was an, a really good up-and-coming uh, lightweight. His career was interrupted for six years, decided to come back. Uh, but United Promotions has given him a break, given him this fight, and we'll see what happens. We, we don't know much about uh, Malay, but he's, he's had uh, 12 pro fights. Please welcome to the ring, Buzz Grant. And here comes the man from Toronto, Ontario, with a nine and four professional record. It certainly looks in shape. He certainly looks in shape. He's ready for this fight tonight. You know, it was only a matter of time before Buzz Cran made his return to the squared circle. The last time he was inside of a ring was inside of this building, inside of the Hershey Center. A questionable end to that fight, yes. maybe an early end to that fight. A hand injury was the result of that stoppage. He is looking to regain the great, great physical abilities that this young man can have. Buzz Krant's got a lot of talent. He has the talent to be an elite level fighter. He's a crowd pleaser. He realizes that you gotta put a show on as well as do it in the ring. As you said, the last his last fight, it happens in boxing. Everyone's gone through that in the career. The champions always come back. And we're gonna see what Buzz is made of tonight in this fight. He's fighting a man that does not look to be in the fittest of shape. But we know he's had 12 professional fights, so he does have some skill. We know Buzz wants to really excite the uh, crowd here tonight. Big crowd to see him. And he's going to obviously be gunning for a knockout as early as he can. This should be a very intriguing fight. It's our third bout of the evening as Marcel Malat Jr. takes on Buzz Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest scheduled for four rounds in the super lightweight division. This bout proudly brought to you by Audi Queensway, Save Max Brokerage, and Phillips Movie. Your judges for this bout are Mr. Dave Dunbar, Mr. Harry Davis, and Mr. Jeremy Hayes. Your referee is Mr. Rocky Zolnicek. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white. He has five pro victories on his record in 14 bouts. From Shediac, New Brunswick, weighing 136.2 pounds, the Buzz Killer, Massey Maye! And uh, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing all black. He has nine wins, four coming by way of knockout in 13 bouts. From Steeltown, Hamilton, Ontario, he tipped the scales at 139.2 pounds. This former Canadian super bantamweight champion returns to the ring tonight after a six-year absence. Make some noise for Buzz Grant! Fighters. Okay, guys, I went over the instructions in the change room. Obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. Touch up. Buzz Grant looks cut tonight. Of course, he's from Hamilton, Ontario, which produced Jackie Clara, the former undisputed world flyweight champion in the 1930s. Buzz looks ready to fight and get his career back on track. We are just seconds away from this bout getting underway here from the Hershey Center. Here we go. coming towards our end here back into the middle it looks like melee is coming forward not it's coming forward throwing shots wild shots sticking his chin out buzz grant's just trying to get his legs under him a bit hit him with a good uppercut there 
It's not much of a feeling out round. They're going at it right away. Buzz Grant, he looks a little stiff, a little nervous. He does look a bit nervous. That was a, that's a good point. That was a wild right hand he threw. If he wants, he's doing it again, although he caught him with those shots. He's going to need a couple rounds to get acclimatized to being in the ring again. It's different from being in the gym when you're sparring. Some tremendous deceiving head movement here from Millet. Millet has been boxing on a regular basis. He hasn't taken time off, so he's used to being in the ring. Millet has an incredibly awkward style, but his punches are just essentially arm punches. It doesn't look like he has the power to hurt Buzz Grant, but you never know. It only takes one shot. Nice right hand by Buzz Grant. A huge overhand right there to the way of Millet. I think he shook Millet up with that right hand. A little bit of dirty boxing here between the two. Holding and hitting. Some direction being showcased from the corner of Buzz Grant. Buzz should keep his elbows in more. His elbows are too wide. He's getting allowing more of a target for himself to get hit. Once again, you're watching Championship Boxing live on Rogers TV. Kyle Alberto, Lou Eisen, Andrew McRae bringing you all the action tonight. I know there's a special person watching the broadcast tonight for you. I know your daughter's watching it all. Yes, my beautiful daughter, Esther Eisen, is at home watching the fight. And uh, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> Later night. Hopefully she'll be going to bed soon, but uh, watching, watching her uh, daddy uh, commentating on the fight tonight. I said a good friend of mine watching the broadcast as well. Got to give a big shout out to Michael Neander, one of my very good friends. He's tuning in. Much love to you. We're watching a very, very intriguing contest here. The return of Buzz Grant, and you mentioned it before this contest. He's looking to really get his career back on track. Yes, and he wants to make a statement tonight. And he's he's being he's a good fighter, but he's being sloppy. It's, and right now he's doing a smart thing. He's using his jab. She get in there with the jab and then throw the right hand behind it. He's doing much better now at the end of the round, near the end of the round, than he was in the beginning of the round. His elbows are in, he's throwing the jab. I'd like to see him use a bit more head movement there. Ten seconds remaining in the opening round. And both these men through one round. I don't know what you're looking at, Lou, but they look absolutely exhausted. They do look exhausted, and they've been throwing a lot of punches. It really fatigues a fighter when you miss, and they've missed a lot of punches, too. Millet's an interesting fighter, to say the least. He's not really planting his feet. He's throwing the... He's fighting like a school kid would fight. He's just running forward and milling, is what they used to call it. Just throwing his arms all a flutter than standing and planting his feet and getting leverage on shots. And it's a difficult to fight a guy to guy like that. So I'm sure Buzz's corner is telling him to relax, calm down, just keep using the jab and keep coming over with that right hand after the jab. Well, we gotta ask the expert here, how do you score that round? I would give that round to Buzz Grant because he landed much more cleaner punches. Malay landed a few punches, but more by accident than actually uh, precise shots. That should be a very entertaining second round here. Marcel Mallette looking to get back to 500 in his pro career. Currently 5-6-1 and one at a Shediac, New Brunswick. He's using his jab. It's off balance there. I think Buzz stepped on his foot there for a second. Buzz is throwing that long overhand right without using a jab beforehand. That's sort of an insulting punch to throw to a fighter. It's like saying, he's tele you telegraph it so the other fighter can see it, but he still can't stop it, which means Buzz doesn't have much respect for his opponent. That was very interesting. Depending on the angle, where you are around the ring, that missed footing there from Millet, it almost looked like he got shot with a big right. Yes, it did, but when we have the best view, of course, and we can see him step on his foot and go back. Sometimes it happens at the same time. You catch a guy with a good shot, and you step on his foot. Buzz stepped on the left, uh, right foot again there. Could something like that manipulate a decision for a judge on who wins and loses a round? Could that be a difference maker? Well, the judge, the judge probably won't take a point away unless the referee does that. If the fighter, if the fighter's doing that on purpose, but a lot of fighters will step on the other fighter's foot and land the shot at the same time. And, and that will help him. Judges can't really take a point away unless the referee tells them that he's deliberately fouling him. You're not supposed to step on the other fighter's foot, but some guys did it on purpose. 
see Millet just hanging on to the body of Grant. He looks absolutely drained right now. He looks exhausted. He's not really in uh, shape. You can't really box yourself in the shape. This is a sport. It's not tiddlywinks, as Angelo <laughs> Dundee used to say. This is professional boxing, and if you're not in shape, you're going to get hurt. Absolutely. Far from it. But he's probably the right guy to fight Buzz Grant in his first fight back in six years. He's not going to come in and overwhelm Buzz. He's going to hang in there for the four rounds and give Buzz a workout. And that's exactly what Buzz Grant needs. It's the action picking up here in the corner. Millette looking to gain an advantage here in this second round. Less than a minute remaining. Some good shots. Good uppercut from Buzz Grant. Good right hand from Millette there right on the button of Buzz Grant. But Buzz took that well. Buzz is missing his shots from a distance. He's got to shorten the distance a bit. Open with a jab, maybe double jab, and then they're coming behind it with a straight right hand. You see both looking to make their next move here. They don't want to be exposed to that big shot. You can see that from both fighters. Right, they're both hesitant, but then again, they Malay is the one who's really more in danger here because he's coming in without protecting himself, leaning in head first but they don't want to get caught. Buzz Grant doesn't want to get caught by a wild shot from an awkward fighter, and that can happen. They're both breathing heavily. Their mouths are open. I still think this round went to Buzz Grant. I think he'll be up for two rounds to zip, and I think if he's smart, and his corner's smart for the rest of the fight, rather than try to take him out, he would just box him and get the win. Intriguing second round. I'm, I'm very intrigued to hear who you give that round to. I think Buzz Grant took that round. I think he landed the cleaner shots. Malay landed some awkward shots. He never put them together. But also, you have to remember that Buzz Grant, it's effective aggressiveness, and he was the one who was coming forward and making the fight, and that always has a big effect on the judges. As we see both corners giving some direction to the respective fighters. I'm very interested to hear, as we get a look at some highlights here of this second round, what's the corner of Millette saying right now? This is a young man with a below 500 record. It's been an up and down career for him, right. going through a little bit of, uh, of, of, of really some tough times here with Buzz Grant, who's truly motivated to really get a good result tonight. Probably, they're probably saying hit him low if you want to win the fight, but Seriously, though, they're probably telling him, listen, you don't want to lose another fight. You don't want to be two fights under 500. Fight him smart. It's his first fight back. Make him work for it. Keep using the jab. Work off your jab. Keep circling. Keep using the jab and, and throw the right hand in occasionally. As a trainer in a corner for a fighter, would you be that direct? Would you tell the young man, hey, you're five, six, and one. You got to get a result here tonight. Absolutely. Some trainers won't. They'll sugarcoat it, but you're not doing the fighter a favor. You have to say, you know, you don't want to lose another fight. You, you're going to get less money in your next fight. You have to really make an effort now to pull this out. You're going to have to take chances. You know, don't forget Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns after the 13th round when Angela Dundee, sees, excuse me, Angela Dundee said to Ray Leonard, "You're blowing it, son. You're blowing it." He had to get out the next round and knock and knock out Thomas Hearns. You have to be honest with your fighter. You're not doing him a favor by lying to him. Let's throw it over to our third man tonight, Andrew McRae. He's got another tidbit for us. What do you got? Thank you, gentlemen, and I'd just like to point out, you can't help but hear the corner men for Buzz Grant. They've been the most vocal so far, and what I'm hearing them yelling is to keep that jab working, use the double jab, fast hands. He's got to gauge his distance, and in between rounds right there, I just heard them suggest that he do some fakes and then use the jab. So let's see if he tries to fake my A and bait him into a punch. Thank you, Andrew. Very interesting. That's a great point. That's the whole idea of the sport. You want to walk a man into a shot. You want to turn him and walk him, use his momentum against him. And in terms of faking shots, you know, Malay, or excuse me, um, Grant would be well served to shoot a double jab out and then next shoot a couple double jabs. And then the third or fourth time, make like he's going to shoot a double jab, shoot one, and then come over with the right hand and surprise him. He should make, be mixing his punches up more. And I think the point about distance is great. It's very accurate. He's not giving himself room to punch. He's either too far away or too close. He's got to measure the distance well. I see a lot more color on the body of Buzz Grant. Does that come from the punches, or does that come from maybe the humidity inside of this building? What does it come from? I think from? it's a combination. It's, it's uh, excitement, it's adrenaline, and it's also the humidity in the building. And it's hot under the lights. He's been against the ropes, too, so he's rubbed up against them. That makes his body a bit red. You know, we have to remember, this is his first fight back in six years. 
And when you're sparring, sparring is controlled. But when you're in the fight, you know, a real professional knows how to control their breathing. And being away six years certainly affects you. He one. just got hit with an elbow there from Millette. That's always a problem with the fighter who's awkward. Certainly not a conventional fighter when you talk about Millett, the way he moves, the way he dances around, if you can even call it dancing around the ring. It's, it's, it's certainly unconventional, as we just saw right there. He's a very unconventional fighter. He throws the jab from an odd angle. He bends its head down when he throws it, and he's pulling his arm back, too, so he's telegraphing the shots. Looking for a huge uppercut there to end the round was Buzz Grant. Three of four rounds complete here. And again, very interesting round. How do you score that one? I would have to get that round to Buzz Grant, too. I think he controlled the round. I think Millet was off balance for most of the round. He's throwing these wild shots uh, out the window, as Marciano's trainer Charlie Goldman used to say, wide winning shots. You can't win a fight like that. You gotta throw your shots straight. And when he's missing, he's leaving himself open. He, he's not throwing his punches the correct way, nor is he putting them together. Of course, this is Championship Boxing on Rogers TV. United Boxing Promotion is the promotion featured here tonight. United Boxing really coming up in the ranks of Canadian boxing doing a great job of promoting Canadian fighters. They've always done a magnificent job of promoting Canadian fighters. They have Brandon Cook, one of the best junior middleweights, middleweights in the world. We have Ryan Young sitting over there, former Canadian welterweight champion, is a magnificent fighter. And they also started off with Dylan Carmen, the current Canadian heavyweight champion. They've done a magnificent job in the promotions. How about Denton Daly? I mean, Denton Daly they certainly promoted here. him well. Yes, they did a magnificent job. They got him a world title fight, and they did a great job with him, and Denton's now the Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion. Incredible. One of the incredible fighters that have come out of this great country of Canada. The action here inside of the ring. Buzz Grant looking to put some work in here on Malat. It certainly is. I like to throw that jab out there. It's more of an just his arm, Grant, but Grant does look tired. Got hit with the head by Millet there. That's always a danger. I think now he'd be smart just to just to box him for the rest of the round and win the round on points, but Millet's not letting him do that. Millet's such an awkward fighter. Very difficult to fight. Now, being awkward at times, you would think, could be really an advantage, but to what I'm seeing tonight, it, it's really more of a disadvantage, really setting up shots very well for Buzz Grant. He is. That's a very good point. You know, Millette has this, got tagged there, but he has this habit of just almost closing his eyes and throwing a, a looping punch, and those just are arm punches and not going to do any damage to Buzz Grant. The worry now is when they're in close is that he may headbutt him and cause a cut. Grant is essentially a brawler. He's he's one of those fighters that make up the majority of fighters in pro boxing today. He comes into the ring and just wants a street fight. Whereas Grant would be smarter to box him, which he's trying to do. Corner of us, Grant telling him to utilize the jab. Smart move, double jab there, came behind it with the right hand. Doesn't have to knock him out, only has to win the fight. I, I can't believe Malay actually stood there with his arms down by his sides. Once again, leaned his head forward through an awkward right hand. You telegraph your shots like that, you're very seldom going to land them. Now corralling each other here, that is certainly a huge sign that both these young men just cannot wait for the final bell to be drawn. They're, they're hoping and praying the final bell is going to come in a couple of seconds. They're both exhausted. They're giving it their all. Your skill sometimes tends to sag when you're, when you're losing your uh, energy in the ring, but Buzz Grant's looking good here down the stretch. He's dancing, he's moving around, using the left hand. Once again, Malay comes in to try to brawl with him, to grab him, to hit and hold, and Buzz Grant should stay away from that. Well, certainly not the most entertaining fight tonight, but both these young men certainly giving it 110%, looking to make an impact here in the final 10 seconds of the fight here. It, you know, maybe not the most entertaining. It is in a way, though. It's a very intriguing fight. Two contrasting styles. They're going at it now in the corner. The fight's going to end soon. Buzz threw a good uppercut and landed there, but you got to give Millet credit. He went the distance with him. Very awkward man. That will do it.
as Millette and Buzz Grant threw a couple of big haymakers there to end this contest. What a bout. And you bring up a great point, Lou. Might not have been the most entertaining fight, but in many ways it was. Very awkward, very unique style from both fighters. And again, it is just great to see Buzz Grant back in the square circle. Yeah, that's the main point. It's great to see Buzz back doing what he loves. He takes joy in it. He's good at it. This was a good first fight. He's going to face awkward fighters, guys that are hard to fight, guys that other guys duck. But this was a good first fight for him to get back, to get his feet wet again, the, you know, to get the uh, the old lungs going, to get the heart going. He should be happy with performance. No doubt he won all four rounds. And we'll be looking for big things from him down the road. We have some big fights coming up here on the card later on. Ori Cox taking on Winston Matthews. That's a highly anticipated fight. Mohamed Abedin out of Brampton. He's taking on Omar Valenzuela out of Guadalajara, Mexico. And of course, our main event tonight, Cody Crowley taking on Juan Carlos Cano out of Mendoza, Argentina. Let's head it over to ringside now, though, for Patrick Lono for our official decision of tonight's contest. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. All three judges score them out 40, 36, for the winner, by unanimous decision, Buzz Grant! Well, in a very emotional return for Buzz Grant, and it ends in a fairy tale esque way. Give the decision to Buzz Grant. What an incredible moment for that.